If you think back to the classic games of the 90s, like I often do, many stand out. If you think back to the classic FPS games of the 90s, many stand out. If you think back to the classic war-based FPS games of the 90s, many stand out. If you think back to the classic war-based FPS tactical shooter games of the 90s, many stand out. Okay, yes, we get the idea. This video is about Delta Force, one of the iconic war-based FPS games from the 90s and probably the seminal game to define the tactical shooter genre. Now, war games are a bit of a grey area for me, given their divisive topic, but Delta Force was a crucial and important stepping stone in the world of gaming, and we're going to explore why. Of course, I should probably tell you at this point that this video is actually sponsored by Delta Force, but not these old games, the new game, which we'll get to later, but let's start from the beginning. In 1985, Nova Logic was formed by John A. Garcia, based in Calabasas, California. Garcia had already amassed a wealth of knowledge from working at Datasoft, who produced a wave of titles for computers of that era. Nova Logic's early titles stuck to the formula that Datasoft had binged on, porting arcade games to home computers and between formats, mainly Taito's titles. If a game had already proved to be popular, then it was a safe bet to port it elsewhere. However, with Nova Logic, Garcia wanted to ultimately do something different and something more impressive, and that's where the Voxel Space Engine came into play. In 1995, Kyle Freeman was a developer at Novologic, and he had an idea. It was an idea based upon the MRI and CT medical imaging scanners he had been working with previously. You see, scanners like these use voxels to produce their images. It's quite clever. A voxel represents a value on a three-dimensional grid. Of course, this is nothing new. It's a bit like a pixel on a two-dimensional bitmap image, just with an extra value. Now, the computer doesn't need to map the location of every individual voxel, unlike bitmap images, mainly because it can infer the position of many based on their position relative to the other voxels. Comanche was Novologic's first game to use the voxel space engine, and indeed, it was the first commercial flight simulation based on voxel technology at all. This allowed for an incredibly detailed terrain compared to the vector graphics at the time. Remember, this came out in 1992. It was really quite incredible stuff. I distinctly remember playing it and being absolutely blown away, especially as it was doing all this on a 486DX250, seemingly without breaking a sweat. Sure, things were a bit jagged in places, but come on, these voxels needed to be fairly chunky to even stand a chance of being rendered back then. By 1998, voxel space had been refined and improved to a point where it could take on an FPS, but not any old FPS. This was an FPS that required precision and it required distance, and therefore it required much smaller voxels than we'd been used to. This was also an FPS game breaking into a world that was ripe with groundbreaking games. The year prior, we had titles such as Turok, Doom 64, Blood, GoldenEye, Hexen 2, Dark Forces 2, Quake 2, and in 1998, we had even more impressive games such as Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six and Half-Life. But Delta Force differed, and it differed in many ways. So here's the Delta Force box. Big box version, of course. And other than looking intensely war, the blurb tells you exactly what this is about in a nutshell. Target, two clicks out, lock and load. Let's look alive, gentlemen. Distance. It's about distance, and this was imperative, especially when you look into the features that made Delta Force unique. If you look at games like Doom, and pretty much anything previously, most of the weapons utilise ray casting or hit scan bullets. That means when you aim and fire, the bullet hits the opponent instantly. There is no actual bullet. All that registers is if you hit or miss. Of course, there are exceptions, even in Doom. The rockets, for example, are real projectiles and take time to hit your opponent. What Delta Force did was take this a step further and actually simulated the weapon ballistics. This included the drop time for bullets to reach targets, meaning that when you're sniping someone, you need to account for that. The arcade game Silent Scope, developed by Konami and released in 1999, would take this a step further, implementing a whole sniper gun setup. I bloody loved that game as a kid. But Delta Force's simulation also ported across to the game's AI, in that on lower difficulty levels, the worse their aim, the higher 
for better their aim and indeed lock on your position. So how do voxels play into this? Well, because voxels are used to visualize the terrain, whilst polygons are used to render characters, buildings, and anything else which essentially sticks out, it allowed for draw distances and detailed terrain unlike any seen in other first-person shooters of the time. This is what allowed for such satisfying and impressive sniper simulation and general combat as a whole. By this point, voxel space was up to version 3, and it hadn't stopped yet. Interestingly, one thing that made Delta Force popular at this point, in 1998, was it didn't actually support 3D accelerated cards. Anyone who had a PC back then will remember the bitter wars between manufacturers like Matrox and 3D FX, which meant there wasn't a lot of standardization at this point. Plus, despite competition, 3D accelerated cards were blooming expensive. So if you had your Pentium Pro and a bog standard card with Delta Force, it didn't matter. Voxel Space would serve you well regardless. The game also included the ability to customize your in-game avatar and choose from a male or female operator. Gameplay, your objective was typically to eliminate hostile presences in various regions or take down a high-profile target. Much like later games, including Left 4 Dead, all campaigns are available from the start. Which takes us into Delta Force 2, by which point it's clear that Novologic have coined the tagline, The Art of War which really does sum up what they're trying to achieve, whether you like it or not. You're a member of the US Army's best kept secret, the Elite Special Operations Unit, also known as Delta Force. I mean, it's clearly not that much of a secret, is it, lads? By this point, Voxel Space is now Voxel Space 32, quite a leap in less than a year, but it's kind of expected. A munitions train held by anti-separatist rebels is making its way to a camp just beyond the border. The train is transporting large amounts of munitions and supplies. Voxel Space 32 featured 32-bit rendering, 16 million color support, and 360 degrees of transformation. It's not actually that much of a step further than Voxel Space 3, but it sounds better, so let's go with it. Although not a requirement, it is designed specifically for 32-bit graphics cards, which you almost certainly need, otherwise it'll run like this. Yeah, my Intel Celeron is really struggling here with those smaller voxels. Necessarily, this is also the first point at which hardware acceleration was utilized, and indeed, this game supports Direct 3D and featured stretched voxels, allowing the simulation of taller landscape features such as grass and shrubbery, allowing you, or your opponents, to hide. Thanks to their online gaming platform Nova World, with push-to-talk voice-over net technology, it also sported a snazzy new multiplayer mode, allowing up to 50 players across modes like Deathmatch and King of the Hill. There's also a co-op mode which allowed four players to complete the single-player campaign, which is honestly my jam. That's why I loved Aliens Colonial Marines, despite the bad rap it initially got. Honestly, go back and play it in co-op mode, it's great. Delta Force 2 also incorporated a mission editor which allows you to place objects all over these vast landscapes, which was a lot of fun. Now, at this point, you're probably expecting Delta Force 3, which is what we have, except that it's called Delta Force Land Warrior. I have no idea why. The previous games were also on land, but here we are. Land Warrior packed in 30 missions whilst removing the mission select screen. This is a much more linear approach. Now, Land Warrior arrived in November 2000 for North America, and Novologic already understood the world was changing. Whereas 3D acceleration was an expensive luxury before, it was now everywhere, in part thanks to Nvidia's TNT2 chipset and the expansion of DirectX and Direct3D. This pretty much superseded the market that 3DFX, Matrox, and S3 were squabbling over. To that end, Land Warrior incorporated a hybrid engine that allowed these chipsets to accelerate the polygonal aspects of the game, such as buildings, people, and vehicles. Even in the hills, as you can see here, those blocky elements have made way for triangles. Always with the triangles. This new engine looked a lot better than its predecessor, but it still allowed for impressive draw distances on the terrain, for all that important sniping. It also allowed for more advanced levels, based underground and in expansive tunnel complexes. For me, these are the main Delta Force games. 
Naturally, a slew of expansion packs and sequels would arrive, but none really achieved the same breakthrough excitement of the original games. Now, wouldn't it be nice if a new Delta Force game was developed based on the original formula, the original foundations, but modernised for our current hardware? Yes, I think it would. Which brings me on to the latest instalment, Delta Force Hawk Ops, which is a cross-platform multiplayer online first-person shooter game developed by Tencent Timmy Studios. The game's worldview is based on the original 1998 game, with gameplay evolved from the popular Escape from Tarkov style of survival and extraction mode. The game combines various gameplay elements, including tactical operator shooting based on professional roles, PvPVE survival and extraction, and large-scale player battles in open maps and battlegrounds. It was recently unveiled at Gamescom 2023 in Cologne, which I sadly didn't get to go to this year. But last year I went and it was an amazing experience, but in my opinion, it looks great. It's going to be available on PC and mobile first, followed by consoles at a later date. The story this time is simple. A former Delta Force commander leads an elite task force team to investigate a missing CEO and revolutionary group, revealing the scandal and conspiracy of tech extremists. There are three modes to play through. Extraction mode is based around teamwork and strategy, including PvPVE missions. There's also Great Battlefield mode, which puts players in an all-out war. And there's Black Hawk Down mode, the single-player experience where you'll be immersed in the infamous Mogadishu battle from the game's movie namesake. Launching with at least four operator classes, including Assault, Engineer, Support and Recon, there's enough to keep everyone enthralled here. Check the link down below for the official website of this new Delta Force game and pre-register right now. Frankly, the only thing I'm disappointed about with the new game is that it doesn't make use of the Voxel Space Engine anymore. No, unfortunately, Voxel Space is now a relic of the past, and in many ways the reason that the original Delta Force never retained the lofty heights of the first few games. Remember our discussion on 3D acceleration? Well, the early noughties were a technologically swift place to be. That's why all this retro tech is so damn exciting. But let's look at some of the FPS games that actually came out in the year 2000. You're Denton. What do all these games have in common? Well, they all utilise graphic accelerator cards. Now, although Delta Force had started to do the same, the fundamentals of the game were still based on voxels, something that accelerator cards just weren't geared up to handle. This meant that the fundamentals of Delta Force were left in their wake and really superseded. Of course, the later games caught up with accelerator cards, let's not pretend they didn't, but by that time, competitors had weaseled their way in. It's probably why the last significant Delta Force game was released in 2009, and it's probably why there's been a 14-year gap to the new one. But what Novologic brought to the table was revolutionary. By adding tactical elements, expansive landscapes combining tunnels and open space, sniper scope abilities, advanced mission scenarios, and then bundling it all up with multiplayer modes allowing huge battles, Delta Force, and indeed, the Voxel Space Engine ran its course, just in time for everyone else to catch up, both in hardware and imagination, and do the same. For those reasons, the Delta Force games were a true necessity for the evolution of FPS games as a whole, helping define the tactical shooter genre, and it's great to see that finally, they're back with us. Oh, it's also worth checking out the original Nova Logic website, because boy, that thing is still up and it's still running. Plus, you can also revisit the original games on Steam for a bargain price, so you can get the full backstory before launching into the new outing. Until next time, I've been Nostalgia Nerd. Toodaloo!